Greetings, my friend. <clears throat> thank you for joining me today for another Thank You Yoga break in the series called Thank You Yoga. This particular entry is Thank You Yoga for Sarvangasana, Thank You Yoga for Shoulder Stand. So, Firstly, I want to introduce myself, just in case you do not know who I am. My name is Aaron Cezuric. I'm a 200-hour yoga teacher, among other things. I teach at the Niles Gerard Yoga Room, as well as at a rehab facility and chair yoga at a nursing home. And so, firstly, what I would like to do is give you some of my personal observations of why I am so grateful for shoulder stand or Salamba Sursasana. <clears throat> so the relaxation that is provided within shoulder stand or Sarvangasana is a very excellent complement to the energy that is built up in Sursasana or headstand helps to kind of balance out that that um, intense energy you could call it in sursasana that awakening energy that heat building energy is nicely calmed down cooled down balanced out by sarvangasana and this could be because of one of my other reasons for being grateful for Sarvangasana, the much wider support base that is provided with the shoulders as opposed to the head. So the shoulders are also a stronger part of the body than the head and the neck, so this also could contribute to the greater sense of ease and, and rest in the body when inverting in this other manner. So that is one of the impressions I get of why Sarvangasana may be so complementary to Sursasana, so soothing and restful despite it still being an inversion despite you still being turned upside down <clears throat> on your head, or in this case, your shoulders. I do really also appreciate the chance to exercise my core muscles, as it's always very important to have a strong and healthy core for many, many things, least of which is not the breath. The breath is always very important, so we can have stronger core muscles, that means we can have a deeper, fuller breath. So Sarvangasana can help us nurture a better quality of breath in our lives. And as everything follows the expression of the breath, our lives can be that much more enriched. Also, I would like to thank Sarvangasana for a very helpful and useful way to drain the sinuses as the body is inverted, all the mucus will drain to the front of the throat, to the front of the nose, and give us a better chance to evacuate it out of our system, helping us to cleanse the toxins that are held within the mucus giving us much relief and a quicker route out of any sinus infection or cold that we may be experiencing that involves the accumulation of mucus. So Sarvangasana and supported legs up the wall, supported by the wall, is really a great relief for the lower body, for the legs. As if you're like me and you work all day walking around, 
from one side of a large structure to another carrying weight, your legs and feet will get tired to the point of even throbbing sometimes and perhaps worse. So Sarvangasana and legs up the wall can provide us with a way to in a more lengthy stay, let's say, especially for legs up the wall as opposed to headstand or sursasana allows the legs and the feet a greater chance to rest and relax, to have some of, to have all of the burden of the body and gravity for the most part rele released from them. So I'm very grateful for that reason. I gain much relief out of that experience. And also the neck and the shoulders are given a chance to move, to stretch, to relax in a way that's maybe uncommon for the other, the movements of the head and the neck that you may experience throughout the day mainly being able to touch the chin to the chest for a prolonged period of time counters a lot of the stretching up and to the side and craning the head in, in various other ways. So I'm very grateful for a chance to help relieve and counter those movements. And with that being said, I would like to move on to some important cautions and contraindications to keep in mind. And these are brought to you by Yoga Journal, a very good yoga resource. If you're very interested in the practice of yoga, it's definitely worth exploring Yoga Journal, available for the most part for free online. So the contradictions include menstruation, high blood pressure, glaucoma, detached retina, and pregnancy. Always to keep safety in mind in yoga helps yoga to remain a practice which brings health, happiness, harmony into the body, the mind, and the spirit rather than the opposite. So I would like to include now some benefits according to BKS Iyengar, a renowned yoga guru who has recently transitioned. These come from his book, Light on Yoga, and they are offered on page 212. As a mother strives for harmony and happiness in the home, so does Sarvangasana strive for harmony and happiness in the body. It is a panacea for most common ailments. There are several endocrine organs or ductless glands in the human system which are bathed in blood, absorbing the nutrients from the blood and secrete hormones for the proper functioning of a balanced and well-developed body and brain. The firm chin lock helps to ensure that the thyroid and parathyroid glands remain healthy as they receive an extra supply of blood. Because of the extra supply, the extra blood that is allowed to circulate into the chest and neck region, those suffering from breathlessness, palpitations, asthma, bronchitis, and throat ailments gain relief. As the blood supply is regulated toward the head, those suffering from headaches also gain relief. Continued practice eradicates common colds and other nasal disturbances. Due to the soothing effects of this pose on the nerves, those suffering from hypertension, irritation, shortness of temper, 
nervous breakdowns and insomnia find relief. Constipation is relieved as the abdominal organs are allowed to move freely, relieving the system of toxins, filling the practitioner with increased energy. This asana is a relief for those suffering from uterary, urinary disorders and uterine displacement, menstrual trouble, piles, and hernia. It helps to relieve epilepsy, low vitality, and anemia. It regulates the pra regular practice, will bring new vigor and strength, happiness, and confidence. After a long illness, the practice of this asana regularly twice a day brings back lost vitality. The Sarvangasana cycle, which I will be exploring, this being the first part of the cycle, and next episodes will be the continuation, will activate the abdominal organs and relieve people from the suffering of stomach and intestinal ulcers, severe pains in the abdomen, and colitis. <laughs> so... Very, very lengthy and nice list. Definitely gives us a lot of, a lot of advantages if we do practice Sarvagasana. But of course, keeping in mind safety and what may or may not be appropriate for us at different given times of our life. So safety and kindness to ourselves is always, always should be our first process in thinking if different postures are appropriate for us, but it is always a great boon to our lives to explore these poses if we feel we are, we are open to them, both in mind and body, okay? So very good. Let me go ahead and share the techniques with you. First, we'll go ahead and start with legs up the wall. Now legs up the wall is the supported, the the uh, aided, we'll call, yoga posture, the posture that uses the prop of a wall or a vertical structure to aid us in holding the posture of having legs in a vertical position for a longer period of time than the traditional sarvangasana. So any vertical structure will do as long as it can support our weight and be a, a safe surface without things protruding from it that could cause us injury in some way. So I will use this TV stand over here um, because it is the closest, clearest vertical structure that is available to me. And it is nice to try to clear the area whenever you are doing yoga to have a nice clutter-free space to practice. It just helps to eliminate um, injury and perhaps frustration of trying to navigate around certain objects. So let me go ahead and share the technique with you now, okay? So in legs up the wall, what we'll do first is we'll move the bottom close to the vertical surface. And then we'll allow the legs to straighten out nice and gently onto that surface. Scoot the bottom as close to the wall as we can. We will relax the torso onto the surface below. And here you can have the arms in whatever position feels the best for you. Okay. 
And I just invite you to rest and to relax, to allow everything to settle into place, to let go of effort, of wanting, of desire, to just bring yourself into the present moment, to let go of worries, intentions, anxieties, and might help you to follow the breath here. Just simply, maybe out first, an easy breath in, an easy breath out. And then if you would like to explore a pranayama practice, um, a breath exercise that you, you know personally, I would invite you to do that. I'd like to share one with you. It's a very simple one that can be very flexibly done wherever you would find yourself. The intention behind this pranayama, known as sukham pranayama, or easy breath, is to harmonize the body and the mind through the breath. So as we would breathe in, we would have a certain count, and then we would exhale for that <clears throat> count as well. So we would inhale, one, two, three, four, Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And we would either continue with that count or I'd invite you to explore other counts as would feel appropriate for you, but keeping in mind to keeping that count regular. So same inhale, same exhale, whether it be four or another number of our choosing. And once we feel we have stayed in legs up the wall for long enough, I would invite you to come down by first bending the legs, bringing them in close to the chest and pointing towards the head, and then rolling to a preferred side, and then propping oneself up to a nice upright seated position. And once you are ready to do so, I'd like to invite you also into Sarvangasana. Come on, cutie. Thank you. That's so nice of you. You're so nice. Yes, you are. Okay. Once we are laying back down on the mat, on the surface below, knees pointed upward, I'd like to invite you to bring the knees close to the chest, knees pointed toward the head, and then I would like to invite you to press the hands by the bottom and to roll up slightly so that the lower legs are pointed upward and that the bottom starts to point up as well. Once you are here, taking the hands to the back, near the top of the outer hip, and then straightening the legs out. And then once you are here, depending on your abdominal strength, you could take both legs up, or you could take one at a time. Okay? And what's really important here is that we have a firm chin lock so that the chin is as close to the chest as possible. And this will allow us to have a nice straight lower body. The tendency at first might be to lean forward or lean backwards, but 
we would like to try our best to get a nice straight upright position to the body. So toes pointing straight up and the rest of the body falling. And here we would go ahead and inhale, exhale as easily as possible. Try to maintain that nice straight form. As the chest is compressed in a certain way, the breath might not come in a very long, flowing manner. It might be short and choppy. And then when we are ready to do so, bending legs, allowing the knees to come down by the sides of the head if that's available to us. Straightening and out. And then allowing the back to roll out straight onto the mat surface, whatever surface is below, and allowing the legs to follow. So that they come down. Straighten out. May we take some breath in, breath out here to transition. And when we are ready to do so, we will go ahead and roll onto a preferred side. And then we will press up to a nice seated position. I invite you to take a nice upright posture. Hips rolling forward, shoulders slightly rolling down to the sides and to the back. Taking a nice breath in, breath out here. Of course, if Sarvangasana is part of your practice, I would invite you to continue with the rest. But if you would like to stop here for today, I'd like to invite you to continue in this closing. By taking hands to heart center, bowing the head. I'd like to invite you to thank the body for carrying you through the practice today. Thank the ground for supporting you. Thank vital breath for uniting all living beings through, you, through itself for providing all living beings with a platform with which to grow and to experience life, the many experiences which bring joy and a counterbalance to help us understand the condition and experience of living more fully, help us to appreciate it and fall in love with it more fully. So thank you so much, my friend, for being here today. I would also like to invite you to say a word that means my inner light honors your inner light. That word would be namaste. And I invite you to say this now. Namaste. God bless you, my friend. You have a wonderful day. Until next time. Much love and peace to you now and always.